morning. Um, we are going to be doing an ELD lesson for phase two, uh, grade two students. Um, the way that I went about planning this ELD lesson is that I used your Wonders curriculum. I was told that you guys are being, uh, that second grade is being introduced to, um, it looks like week five, um, unit number one. And so part of ELD is teaching the bricks and mortar, bricks being the vocabulary, mortar being the syntax and grammar. And so today, since it's an introduction, I'm going to be working with the bricks, which is going to be the vocabulary development. And so in order to teach this new vocabulary, I first need to know whether or not students have been introduced to this vocabulary before. So I'm going to be um, using this portable word wall, which has the words that we're going to be introducing to the students today. I'm going to ask the students to rate whether they have know the word whether they have seen the word or whether they've never seen it before. And so they have this color code system. The green meaning that they know it and they can teach it to a friend. The pink meaning of uh, they come across the word but don't really know what it means. And yellow meaning I don't know the word and I've never seen it before. So this will help me to get an understanding of which words that I can, uh, that they know and I can go quicker through and which words um, I'm going to have to take more time and put more learning modalities into them. I'm going to go through an exercise. This is a Sadai strategy, which is a strategically designed instruction, academic instruction in English, where I'm going to have this large poster paper that's broken up into six blocks. And each of these six blocks will become the bricks of the vocabulary that we're going to be introducing. So I'm going to draw a picture that goes or symbolizes with that vocabulary. I'm also going to have a movement that goes along with it so that the students can start connecting the picture, the movement, to the actual bricks or vocabulary. So as I'm drawing, students will also have their piece of paper that they will be copying my image and putting it down on the paper and then moving with me. Once we've done this exercise, I'm going to go back to my word wall and I'm going to pull out pictures, additional pictures, that would correspond to the, the vocabulary. My hope is that they, at the end of the lesson, that they can match the pictures and put it into the right pockets at the end, and hopefully get in, getting them to use the vocabulary in context and sentences. Now these are phase two students, so I know that their ability to communicate with me is going to be limited. Um, they're going to use simple comfort sentences, and so I, I most likely will need to provide sentence frames in order for them to convey um, actual sentences with the new vocabulary. In front of you, I've provided what a CELT Level 2 student would be able to do. So it's broken up, and I, there's many resources that you can go to to find salt levels. I like this one because it broke it down in a simple turn that you can look on one page. Basically, what do students come in with? What skills do they have? What students um, are able to do? And then what us as teachers should be concentrating on when we have this level of student in our group. So I use this as my guide as well as I went to the Common Core Standards on the California um, website, and I was able to pull the ELD standards and align them with the Common Core Standards for English Language Arts. So here at the top it says California Department of Education, and then it has the ELD standards, grade two. And I was working on the collaboration, and you'll see the how it ties to your English Language Arts Common Core Standards here. I have these broken down by grade two, and then my other lesson will be on grade four, which is behind it. <coughs>
the V. So they would always do like this like four point mountain underneath the predicate. And then to expand that predicate, they would be answering these questions. Well, who is it? And when did it happen? And why did it happen? Where and how? So that you get the more powerful sentences. So I'm going to be doing that with my fourth grade group today. Spanish language is a little bit reversed mm -hmm. in this English. Text, uh -huh. So you, you help them out. Yeah. And that would be a perfect ELD lesson where you could say, I know that you guys like, you say this in Spanish, however, in English, yeah. you put, you know, this first. Can you do it, and you can do it the reverse way, they can type it in in Spanish and it'll change it to English? Yeah. Except for it it's not a reliable way. source. Yeah. Google yeah. Translate, it literally is a literal translation, yeah. and sometimes that doesn't work. You just have to help them. So that would be a perfect ELD lesson where you know you could take even the mistakes that you find as they use yeah. Google Translate and say why it's wrong and explain to them you know how you would do that correctly mm -hmm. and why you can't rely on Google Translate. Yeah. <laughs> I find that some of them, it's like although they speak English pretty well, they're still afraid to take. Yeah. But I'm in kindergarten. They're still afraid to take that chance when they're working in a small group with a couple of kids. Mm -hmm. They do just fine and I can listen into them and they're speaking really well, but when it comes to a whole group, it's like they're afraid to speak out. They're still at that stage. But I, I have the kindergartners that are, you know, five, six years old. Very nice. So, so have you guys been introduced to the Bix and Kelps? I know it's probably back in your clad. So Bix and Kelps, so Bix is basic interpersonal communication skills. It's what students develop first. And so we may listen to our students and think, wow, they're proficient in English because they have that survival language. They're able to socialize with their friends. They're able to ask to go to the restroom. They're able to play with, with their, their buddies outside. Um, however, you see them freeze up when it becomes academic language. And that's where you were mm -hmm. saying, you know, when we're in a whole group, all of a sudden, like, oh my goodness, what's going on? And that's because they haven't developed their kelps. It takes longer to mm -hmm. get those skill, skills. And kelp is cognitive academic language proficiency. So it's that academic language that it takes five to nine years to actually grasp, where Bix is between one to four years to get that survival language. Um, so that's why you'll, you'll think they're proficient when in reality, when it comes to that kelp, they don't have that academic ability or foundation to be able to succeed in your lessons. It's universal. Math is universal. So a one is a yeah. one in here as and it is still, you hear them counting in, in Spanish, but that's right. right so that transfers a lot easier than yeah. um, our English language because although there are some cognates, the English language is one of the more difficult ones to use because there's so many rules and irregularities in our language. Yeah. It doesn't all transfer. So math is a perfect place to see your English language learners excel yeah. over other subject areas because they'll, they'll be able to transfer that information a lot easier. That's good.